everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Lucid's 2022 Tournament Game 4, where we are playing Nazca. This is turn 77. Things are not really heating up or anything like that. We're still we're still coasting um, towards our conflict with probably Pelagia, but who knows. Um, that's the plan at the very least. Uh, still gearing up for turns, and then we'll pop. Uh, in the meantime, we've got some stuff going on, so let's take a look at that, shall we? Um, kind of kicking things off, we have a couple of battles, uh, as our myriad scouts have been flooded throughout the, uh, throughout the world. Let's see what we can, see what we can catch. We've got battles between, um, most of the players. Yeah, everyone's represented here except for Palladio. So, Van versus, uh, Arco in Lost Canyon Range. What do we got? Let's see what tricks people are pulling. We got someone with Lucky. Um, okay, we've got a Van Jarl, Frost Brand, Shield of Gleaming Gold, uh, got a Pendant of Luck, got an Armor of the Knights. A uh, simple, easy-peasy situation. Um, just up against some PD, Fist Forum, Blessing, Flight, Textbook. Easy-peasy. Very nice. Okay. Van takes that. Uh, then Arco striking back at Van in the Shepherd's Haven. Yo, this goes. All right, what do we got here? We have a a Bakamono squad from Arco. Um, it's just a little bit of PD. Uh, Bakamono are kind of like notoriously like. It's weird, right? I feel like when they're supported, they actually can do kind of a crazy amount of work because you can pack so many of them into a square. But unsupported, they tend to just die in droves and give really. Really chaotic results, which just kind of makes sense for them. In this particular instance, that did, did my headset, my headset turned off. Why did my headset turn off? The what? That's strange. All right, I couldn't couldn't hear my music, and I was like, "What's going on?" Anyway, his, uh, that's a win for Arco. Very few losses. Nice. Uh, Ulm attacking Arco in Sailor's Haven. Okay, we've got a little squad of Black Plate here. A couple of Master Smiths in the mix. Should be able to take on some simple stuff. Uh, this is not simple stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is going to get creamed by what Arco has here. Uh, would be my assumption. Unless there's some fun trick that Ulm's going to pull. Ooh, just deleted there. That's not great. Oof. Green Lions are pretty damn good. That uh, Vitriol Breath is armor-piercing, so it's actually pretty sweet. Interesting. How many, how much ammo do they have on that? Seven ammo. That's fair. Oof. All right, so yeah, that, that was a trouncing, but we, we knew it was going to be a trouncing as soon as we saw what was up against, uh, or what it was up against. 79 went in. <laughs> 47 did not go back out. Three or four green lines lost. Ooh, very, very few um, losses there. Ay, ay, ay. That's rough. Um, but, I mean, that's not something that Ulm can't deal with. It's just unfortunate uh, for Ulm to see himself bouncing. Um, that's that's um, low-ish commitment, but it's not, it's not nothing, right? And then Van is attacking Van. Van Van V Van. Vanarus is attacking Vanheim. Um in Vanarus or on Vanarus. It's like. Um, so just pinging out here. What do we have? What's this? We got a little shadow imp. We got a scout. Okay. He's just he's just dicking around at this point. Uh, burning gems, I would assume, right? Like throw throw enough gear onto a unit, uh, burn gems. And go from there. 
And I'm assuming this is just a gym burn attempt to hopefully slow down Vanheim. Fingers crossed. Okay, uh, well, see how that goes. Anyways, that is that. We've got some unexpected events in the turn in Mark. Crops are thriving and harvest has been exceptional. So increased tax and lowered unrest. Cool. Um, a Malkry priest foresaw a great disaster. That's pretty nice. Ancient treasure has been unearthed. So we get some gold in Mushwood. And then in Packwoods, warring tribes cause unrest. Part of the population has been killed in the raids. So we gain unrest and lose population, uh, which is unfortunate. So um, events for the turn. We have one negative and two positive. Right, uh, Packwoods Unrest plus 32 and Packwoods Population minus 210 being the negative event. And then the positives are Mark Tax went up by 400% and Mark Unrest went down by 1. Uh, and we got 245 gold this turn from an event. Um, so the question is, is, is that worthwhile in Mark? And Mark is actually one of our uh, decent-ish... I say decent-ish tax, but... You know what? I'm not sure if the game actually breaks this out, right? We get 134 income from Mark, but that is mostly because of our gold and copper mine here. That is 80 of it, right? Um, the rest of it is actually relatively low population. So, IDK on that particular it, it, situation? Um, I, I mean... Obviously, it's going to be better. Even even if we only got 50 times 400, right? That's still better than not. Um, but 134 times 400, way, way better. Uh, we we got to spend a bit this turn, so I'm, I'm guessing maybe it calculates. Anyways, moving right along. That is the only uh, real stuff reportable for the previous turn. We did get scouted out. Um, another scout bites the dust. What are we doing this turn? A whole lot of movement, right? And just moving things around, moving Hatenruna around, uh, both down here towards Centennia into Miratrand. We're just moving Hatenruna around uh, continuously up into Mushwoods, right? Trying to make sure that we are patrolling everywhere. We have pretty much encircled our, our entire um, empire, right? We have Centennia left that's kind of like out an outer bit, and then um, Mushwood and Klon that are kind of out outer bits. And then we're not really patrolling in Underhome. Uh, but we're patrolling all around those locations, meaning it's incredibly difficult for anyone to get into our interior, which at this point is kind of whatever, but um, we're, we're basically there. We're very close to patrolling all or almost all of our locations. Um, and that's good. That means people have to revert to utilizing spells to try to, uh, either spells or really geared up, um, scouts to get past us. And that's pretty nice. So, uh, we've got that going on. And then aside from that, we are just continuing our, uh, experience factory, shipping people back and forth from that. Um, we are, you can see we've got some arrows coming up here, right? Uh, that is because we are moving... Uh, Echidna up into Olifa, and then we're moving you can see uh, some Supayas up in Dutrantine. Um, again, trying to do that whole, trying to start spreading people out, right? We've got a bunch of Supayas. I say a bunch of Supayas. We've got a couple Supayas kind of like hanging out here. Um, and we're trying to separate them out for the concept of like, okay, these two Huron priests are going to take these Supayas and they're going to hit this location, etc. Um, so we've got a couple of turns that we're trying to get that all set up on, right? Um, as we approach turn 80, we're going to be continuing to set that up, trying to hide our movement a little bit. Um, but it is at this point that um, Pelagia, I think, knows that this is coming. And we can also see uh, has fortified the fuck uh, out of their waters compared to where they were 10 turns ago, right? So... <laughs> This is not going to be easy. This is going to be a, a right pain in the ass. But 77 turns, 80 turns in the game. It's kind of to be what expected or kind of what's to be expected. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. We'll see what we see. Um, looking from the map, our map, Arco has actually made quite a few pushes uh, this turn. 
Um, and I'm... There is some concern, right? Like, if if Arco is able to to flood into the Vanarusian area uh, territory, right? Um, you can actually even see there's some deep raids from Arco here. Um, if Arco is able to flood into the Vanarusian territory and kind of hold it down, right? Like, hold down the fort, then he'll actually be, right, from a from a territory perspective, he'll be a match for Pelagio, which is larger than Vanheim is, right? Um, Vanheim is ballooned out because they're a little bit in my space, a little bit in, in Ashdod space, a little bit all, obviously they took all of Jotunheim, but even, even just in like where they are for just Vanheim and Jotunheim as their capitals, um, they're bigger than they would seem otherwise, right? Um, if they take Vanarus and hold Vanarus, which they are trying to do right now, then that's going to be a big deal. But I, I think a lot of the conflict, obviously, right here is going to matter in whether or not Arco is able to... Because So here's the thing. Arco is fighting multiple people, but they're fighting on... Um, they're fighting Ulm on a very focused, concentrated front, right? So Ulm does not have multiple attack vectors. It's literally just like walk into these provinces, right? So if Arco can just hold o Ulm at bay, right, and concentrate his forces on Vanheim down here, Arco might actually have a, a chance at turning this into a closer to a 1v1. But I don't know at this point, honestly. At this point, I am unsure. Alm took this? That's so weird. Strange. Very, very strange. Much wow, very strange. Alright, anyways, uh, that's pretty much all we have going on this turn. Let's talk about uh, mechanical things for the turn. Uh, we've got uh, recruitment. So, recruitment for the turn. We are doing two Apu, one Lizard Shaman, one Koya, one Malkri Priest, one Huron Priest, and five Sun Guard. A little bit more than we have been able to afford for a while because of the gold events, so that's pretty nice. Um, nothing super crazy here. Uh, I think this is our first Lizard Shaman. We're probably... Nope, not our first Lizard Shaman. Uh, but we're probably going to try to get more Lizard Shamans as we can. Uh, they're very useful. So might as well try to grab them. Um, Koya, I think maybe a little different than we normally would do. Koya are actually really, really nice. Um, and okay, so Koya are really good. Um, what's the the phrasing that I'm looking for here? Koya are really good um, battle mages, but they're also really good utility mages, right? Um, the part of the problem is is they're very expensive. Um, so, uh, and aside from being very expensive, they are also, um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, they are dangerous to have around because if they die, they, uh, take an Inca with them, right? Uh, we are potentially going to look into getting some Koyas, twice morning them, and then drowning them. In Underhelm, uh, just to kind of like continue to be able to develop our retinue of Koyas as casters, but also um, to do that so that we can have those, but not have them affect our Incas, right? Because if they if they uh, if they are twice born, when they die, they do not take an Inca with them, right? Um, so that's potentially a thing that we could do. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to follow through with it, but we'll, it's something on our docket that might be good. That also uh, means that fighting underwater, we have more undead command units that don't require um, rings of water breathing, like that type of situation. So um, just, just something that we're looking at, might might do, might not, we'll see. Um, aside from that, we have Nazkin recruits for the turn, 58 Hatten Runa this turn, um, we are almost done burning Golm to the ground. 176 long dead warriors this turn. 
Um, getting up there pretty nice. 16 recalled Supayas. Not doing bad. Two summoned Supayas for 14 Supayas. Um, and then one summoned Huaka for 7 Huakas. That's all good. Very happy about that. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Sorry, I'm making adjusted notes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then continuing onwards, we have our special, our growing special recruit retinue. Uh, we have special recruits, one dire wolf, um, one dust walker. And then over here, we have one earth elemental. Over here, we have one Air Elemental, now that we have Aea, right? Uh, three Earth Gnomes and one Sylph. So, a growing retinue of, of just units that we're spawning, which are not unuseful units, I say. Uh, the Direwolves and the Dustwalkers are probably never going to see a use, right? But the Earth Elementals, the Air Elementals, the Sylphs, the Earth Gnomes... Those absolutely can and will be useful for us in specific situations. Obviously, um, right, like fighting fighting uh, Pelagia for these land nodes. Uh, we're going to use everything that we've got. Uh, air elementals um, and sylphs will be super useful in that particular instance. Going underwater, we won't be able to take the air stuff, but the earth stuff will still be very effective. Um, we talked previously about, you know, conceptually, a wall of earth gnomes is actually pretty decent, right? Relatively chunky HP, um, decent regeneration. They are poor amphibians, so not great stats underwater. They don't have great stats to begin with. But um, if we are just beefing them up with, a sh with regeneration, they have their own regeneration, we're beefing them up with protection, they can hold the line, right? And that might be what we need in a lot of particular instances against Pelagia. So, we'll see. Um, what else do we have going on? We've got a couple rituals going off this turn, actually. Not a lot of stuff that's super crazy. So, rituals for the turn. Uh, two Revive Kings, one Fairy Court, and one Dome of Solid Air. Um, so, let me jot that down real quick. The Dome of Solid Air, we are throwing up in Olifa, right? Um, just getting all of our stuff protected up, geared up for the inevitable backlash from Pelagia. Uh, so we've got that going. Also, just the intention of trying to guard our thrones so that Van doesn't teleport in or, or what have you, right? Arco doesn't teleport in. Um, or uh, shit like Arco, I don't know. No, I don't know how that would work, actually. Uh, I don't know if that goes through a dome. Like, if, if Arco tries to, like, summon a horror on um, on our province, right? On our uh, throne province. That could absolutely be an option. So, um, we've got we've got differing situations there. Maybe it would be. Um, what else do we have happening? We have... Um... Oh, right, the Fairy Court, right? We're we're doing a Fairy Court down here with our current Fairy Queen. Um, we are in... We are in the Ultimate Gateway, so we do actually... How much did that cost? I don't think I have that down. Um, 40, so 40% 40 of 40. Quick maps, that's like 16, right? Something like that. It is! It's 16. Cool. Uh, which is useful to know because Ultimate Gateway, we are saving this turn 6 Astral, 8 Death, and 16 Nature with that uh, Fairy Court. Very cool. Oh, and the Re I didn't talk about it, but the Re Revive Kings, we're just continuing to revive Mound Kings as we need. We're going to need a lot of them to ferry around a lot of these Long Dead that we've got going. I wish there was a... I wish... In Nation Overview, by the way. I wish there was some sort of something where you could... Like, you have commanding this many units, commanding X number of units, right? But there's no... There's no, like, easy total, right? There's no, like... There's no, like, you have a total of this many units, right? 
Um, there's no easy total of... You have a total of this many commanders. I wish there was some sort of like... Mil like You had a nation overview. I wish there was some sort of like military overview. Where you, you could just be like, here's a list of all of your commanders sorted and you can sort them by location like province like you do with nation right because boom here they are um or you could sort them by type right like or you could sort them by experience or what whatever the fuck you wanted to sort them by and then also having a tab in there that's like here's all of your units right like you have 3,271 lung dead. Cool. Great. Good to know, right? You know, it'd, it'd just be nice to have that information. Unfortunately, we currently do not. Um, we could total out that information, but that's incredibly tedious to try to accomplish, I think. Um, so, we're not going to. I'm, I'm not going to subject myself to that. Um, Alright, yeah, ta, 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 ta. what else do we have? Well, last thing on the list is a forging. Um, forging is all spread around, so I try, to, I try to click while I'm doing these videos. I try to click on where most of the stuff is actually happening, but the forging is all over the fucking place. Um, so, for the turn, we have one Lightless Lantern, two Skull Mentors, two Rings of Water Breathing, one Herald Lance, one Bloodstone, one Helmet of Heroes, one Amulet of the Dead, and one Demon Bane. Uh, most of this is stuff that we have done before. Uh, no reason to really go over it. Continuing to up our research through research boosters. We're getting very, very close to that uh, 2000 mark. Um, so we should be hitting Alt-9 uh, on course. Very happy about that. Um, other stuff, Rings of Water Breathing, that type of stuff. All uh, Amulets of the Dead, stuff that we've dealt with. Um, Bloodstone, stuff that we've dealt with before. I don't think we have dealt with the Herald Lance, the Helmet of Heroes, and the Demon Bane. So let's actually take a look at that and talk about why we are making those. Uh, first up, the Demon Bane. Right, so this is a Demon Bane. It's a two-handed weapon. Um, it gives you additional hit points, and it gives you a shit ton of fire resistance. Sorry. Um... And it's, it only costs five water, right? So we we do need to be somewhat cautious with our current water income. Uh, I don't know that it is enough to really fight Pelagia, uh, especially when we're already spending so much on things like water bracelets and um, rings of water breathing, etc., etc. Uh, but Demon Bane's actually one of my favorite items in the game. I love when I have enough of a water income to just start producing two or three Demon Banes every single turn. Um, that's only three, six, nine water gems, depending on how many you're making, if you're using a hammer. Um, and what you get out of it is actually a really powerful tool in the late game, right? Um, being able to boost the HP of your mages specifically is really really powerful and putting 15 fire resistance on something like that is is a big kind of like a fuck you kind of moment in a lot of particular cases uh for primarily things like flames from the sky but also uh battlefield fire magic can really lose a lot of its potency if you have a plus 15 fire resistance on a lot of your uh your commanders and you throw out, right, like, um, um, Firefend or one of the Warriors or uh, Gaia's Blessing or whatever, and you get, like, a bonus 5 on there. Because I think it stacks. I think I think as long as it's not... You, you can't stack same, same number bonuses, but I think you can stack differing number bonuses. I think? I don't remember. Anyways, it, it does make your mages somewhat tankier to a lot of late game shenaniganry, both just by increasing their HP, but also by giving them fire resistance, which is really nice. Um, so it's one of my favorite items. It also um, is a demon bane, right? It is a two-handed weapon that does two times damage versus demons. And when you get into super late game battles where where one side doesn't just immediately demolish the other via something like uh, Wailing Winds or um, 
something like uh, a foul vapors, right? Like when when basically every each side already has all of the tools. Uh, at that point, it can come down a lot to uh, the quality of the units, the amount of units, right? Um, and what what all everyone has the ability to, to accomplish. One of the things that we are not really going to be able to do, at least unlikely anytime soon, is have a lot of blood magic or demons, right? And that's absolutely something that both Van and Ulm are going to be able to do at the very least, right? Demon Bane... You would be surprised, you could throw this on, for example, you could throw this on a Hydromancer. He suddenly has uh, 13 HP instead of 8 HP. Um, and then in a battle where he has, um, you know, we have an army of gold up, right? Like that type of scenario. Um, he's got like fog warriors up. Maybe we get to the point to where he, he has something like, uh, he's been hit with like a strength of giants or something. Um, if, if he has a demon bane and a demon falls next to him he, or, or lands next to him, you can absolutely see in big ass battles, random mages just go whap and lop like a demon's head off because of this times two damage and the large amount of additional damage that it does. Right, um, so it is kind of cool. It's uh, it's an interesting scenario, uh, especially like you layer stacks like uh, weapons of sharpness and and other types of things. So, a uh, quickening, right? <laughs> like you got like a lot of times, all of your mages are in there getting these buffs, and those buffs, a lot of those buffs don't really matter to your mages necessarily, but they can matter in big late game fights with uh, storm demons and shit like that dicking around. So. Um, it's pretty interesting. I, I really like Demon Bane. I'm kind of gushing about it because it's, I don't know, it's just something to talk about. But it's also one of my favorite items. Um, so, we're making s at least, I want to make more of those, but I don't know how much we're going to be able to commit to. Um, if I could, I would I would churn them out uh, a whole, whole bunch. But, moving on, Herald Lance and Helmet of Heroes. Uh, I think we've got those over here. We've got the Helmet of Heroes... We got the Herald Lance over here. Where is my Herald Lance? Herald Lance. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, Herald Lance and Helmet of Heroes are both here for the same reason. I think, actually, nope, can't make them on the same person. So Herald Lance um, and Helmet of Heroes both have the inspirational tag. Uh, we talked about this previously, right? The idea of... Um, we're going to want to make sure that our big armies don't just fucking rout, right? Supayas are undead, but they don't have that uh, super undead... I'm not talking off my gourd, right? Yeah, they don't have that super undead morale. Um, so they can and will rout, um, as will all of the rest of our shit, right? And one of the ways that we can avoid doing that or having that happen is by taking our really good leaders and making them even better leaders, right? So we have people like our Incas who are already plus one for leadership. We can give them things like Herald Lances and then we can give them things like um, Helmets of Heroes. And then they have their original plus one, but they also have a plus three off of these two items. Um, you can give them other things like a Horn of Heroes, I believe. Yep, Horn of Valor, sorry. Um, and then suddenly you have a commander that goes from Inspirational 1 to Inspirational 5, right? And that can absolutely make a difference on whether or not your 300 units flee the battlefield due to a fucking wailing winds or a blood rain or what have you. Um, so we kind of want to have at least two or three, maybe four of these gear sets where we're kind of like, this is the leader. They're leading the majority of the troops. That way, this person, um, we're making sure that that as few people are routing as possible. Our, our mages can still route, right? But our units will tend to stay the battlefield, right? Um, other things to talk about with, like, Helmets of Heroes is it's actually not a bad helmet, right? Um, Protection 9, zero defense penalty, and zero encumbrance penalty is actually pretty alright, right? 
Um, it is somewhat expensive, but uh, it, we will be reducing the cost of fire, right, by two. So it's only three fire. Um, and then earth is actually something that we can spare at this current point in time. So um, not that big of a deal. And then uh, Herald Lance is, again, somewhat expensive. We do re reduce the cost. Uh, Astral is something that we can spare, but it's not something that I want a whole lot of spare on, right? Um, but it also has that fun little interesting tag like an e Demon Bane in that it is three times effective versus undead and demons. So not something that we're going to mass produce to slaughter demons with. That would be really inefficient, I think. But it it is an item that I think is very niche and useful for what we are going to try to accomplish specifically in that moment of please, 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 people don't rout. Um, <laughs> and it could prove useful later on in the random situation that a couple of demons try to, to run upon a guy, right? And they get stabbed in the face. So, great. Fantastic. 100%. That is pretty much it. Um, we don't have a lot else to talk about, unfortunately. Um, it is what it is. We're still gearing up for that, uh, that inevitable conflict. Not long now. Um, I, t I think I talked last time about how I'm really getting into this whole anticipating this conflict. Um, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not severely under overestimating what we can accomplish here. Because it's possible that I am, right? It's possible that I, I have severely have overestimated what we're going to be able to accomplish and I I'm well, I'm gonna get smashed, um, and then the game's probably gonna become unfun because at that point our options turn into, well, we can either we can either betray Ulm, who I think we I don't think we could really face off against Ulm one v one at the moment, but I do think with Ulm being pressured here and us pressuring them here. We could make some gains, like in the Ashdod area, um, or at least like buy them off. But I don't really want to do that, right? Like, I Ulm has held the alliance for the most part, right? Con conceptually, in the concept of like they have not attacked us, we have mostly worked together, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, the alternative is if things with Pelagia don't work, um, and I don't want to do things with Ulm. And the only option we have is just, just throw ourselves at Vanheim. And I do I do still think, even though we are approaching that parody concept with research, I do think Vanheim has the without without a serious boost, right? Like we take a whole bunch of land off of Pelagia or off of Ulm. Van has the advantage easily. Um, just in pure economics and, um, in late game kind of like power. I mean, uh, as aside from the fact that we are Nazca, right? So like we do have that concept of growing strength via, you know, via sacreds and via uh, innate spellcaster, but it's hard for us to make use of that if we have zero economy and we can't kind of, we can't push out of the box that we're in. So fingers crossed. We're going to see how this all works out um, in the next couple of turns, I'm sure. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.